Hello and welcome to Cornish Walking Trails. Today we're exploring Falmouth and we've come to Castle Drive. Our walk today will take us to Falmouth. We will be starting on the moor, walking along the main street until we get to Pendennis Castle, passing the docks on the way. We will return via the promenade in front of the hotels through the Princess Pavilions, returning to our car via Jacob's Ladder. The walk starts from the moor, which was once a tidal creek and now a rather traffic-bound focal point of the town's busy commercial life. Walk down Killigrew Street on the south side of the moor, then cross High Street onto the Prince of Wales Quay. Cornish flag! That's looking up towards Penryn, flushing. That's the docks. Looks like they've got a big ship in there being refurbished. And that's the swimming pool, isn't it? Ships and castles. You can catch a ferry across the St Moors from here to return from the quay and turn left into Market Street, the first of farmers linked to main thoroughfares. All the way along these busy shopline streets, you can divert left to the waterfront, to the quays of Fish House Quay by the Grapes Inn. We've just wandered down by the Grapes. The inn at the top of the hill is a little tiny slope that you come down. Fish Strand Key in Falmouth. This is where the news of Trafalgar came in in 1805, announcing the victory at the Battle of Trafalgar and reporting the death of Lord Nelson. There's the St Moore's Ferry to the quays of Upton Slip in Church Street, where you'll find a colourful figurehead of the old ship, the Amazon. I think we need to go and find that. Should we go and find that? Yeah. Let's go and find that. I like the way they painted the ship on the wall. Is this it? I don't think she's very happy, do you? The Amazon warrior. She looks a bit butch. Look, she's got a fist and everything. Oh, Alright, I'm getting away then. She's like me. <laughs> the church was built in 1663 by the Killigrees. Dreaming. Of a, a property in Falmouth. Very expensive. <laughs> Cornish Bakery, fresh pasties. Andrew, did you see the pasties in the window back there? Yeah. <laughs> You're surprised you didn't get one. I know. There's a chip shop there as well. <laughs> oh, and that one. Key Street leading to King Charles Key and North Key. More keys. King Charles Key. Through the tunnel. That's where we were a minute ago with Amazon Lady. Look. Where? Over there. Oh, yeah. Custom House Key you will find a tall red brick chimney stack, the King's Pipe, once used to burn smuggled tobacco confiscated by exercise men. Do you Try mean exercise men? E oh, ex exercise <laughs> men. <laughs> men doing lots of exercising. So this is North Quay. Now here at Falmouth Harbour, tiny little entrance to the harbour. Those old steps, very evocative of the era. I love the way that the granite piers have been put in and then the upright stones fill in between like sandwiches. Oh, I think we found the King's Pipe. So there's the old custom house with loads of pillars. Coat of arms. So we've just walked around the street a bit and now we're on Custom House Key. I never knew there were so many keys in Falmouth, did you? No, you need a key ring. <laughs> From the end of our Wenwick streets, continue along Grove Place and Bar Road, passing the well-preserved medieval manor house of our Wenwick. The Killigrew family was very influential in Falmouth. Our Wenwick house was the seat of the Killigrews. In 1646, sensing the parliamentarians had the upper hand in the Civil War, Sir John Killigrew set fire to the house so that they couldn't occupy it. Portions of the old walls have been incorporated into the current houses that now occupy the site. Opposite our Wenwick is an ugly granite obelisk of the late 18th century. Hey, Hello! You just disappear! That's my job! Vent Square is used all year for the Oyster Festival, Beer Festivals. There's something going on every week in Falmouth. We've also got the National Maritime Museum down there. Also Rick Stein's Fish and Chip Shop. There's all the boats on the quayside. I love the noise they make in the wind. So that's looking back at Falmouth, that water sports centre never used to be there. When I was a kid it was part of the Royal Navy. And I used to come down here with my dad. And we used to launch a little mirror dinghy. Sail out in the carrot rows for an hour or two. Gorgeous looking yachts here. Look at them. 
now it's all knitted. Cross over at a junction with Avenue Road, then opposite the entrance to Falmouth Docks, bear right and go under a railway bridge. Cross with care at the roundabout, then continue up the road opposite signposted Pendennis Castle. Here we are at Falmouth Docks, great big shipping I mean, work done at the moment. See how tiny the men are at the front here, on the bow. Really noisy place, isn't it? Do you remember when we used to bring James down? Cranky tell him Crane. That's cranky Crane. <laughs> Thomas. Yeah. I do. We're just making our way down Castle Drive beautiful glimpses out towards Carrick Rose. It's really windy today, a day of showers and rain and sunshine. It's, it's just bizarre. Trees are all illuminated by the sun against that rainy, rainy cloud. So we're here now at the tip of Castle Drive. Some moors in the distance. It is inside that little part of the castle, down right on the cliff edge. There's St Moors. There's the other castle. So these castles were built by Henry VIII. Between the two of them, they protected the carrot roads. Our little common grey seal. Beautiful light on the water today. It's looking down towards Halford. It's so windy today. <laughs> I don't think our homemade microphones are going to cope. We're going to head up there now towards um, those buildings in the background. Turn right into Cliff Road. Falmouth Hotel. First hotel down here built in the 1860s for the Victorian tourist industry. There's a wedding there today. It's a little wedding car all done up. It's like beautiful. The railway was extended to the docks after the hotel was built and more hotels sprang up along this area. This is where the Madeira Hotel used to be. It's now going to be one and two bedroom apartments for the over 60s. This is where you stole my heart, the love of my life, 50 years on, from Tian John. What's down there? Oh. Let's go find out. I might never come back. <laughs> Hello! Oh, where? Well. You know, my darling, is it having a good walk? Yes. Seat by the sea. Entrance onto Tunnel Beach. Just before the Gothic Folly, cross the road and enter Gill and Dune Gardens. Shell seats. Oh, look at them. Oh, I've got to sit down, I've got to sit down. Oh. Oh, As you head out of the gardens, you enter Princess Pavilion. We've just had a cup of coffee and a piece of cake here at the Princess Pavilion. It's really pretty. Leave by the opposite corner and pass by the theatre box office. Cross the road and continue down Avenue Road. Follow the road downhill and go beneath a railway bridge. Then turn left along the central tree-lined parade of Arwenick Avenue. Walk between the flanking pillars at the end of the avenue, cross the street and keep ahead along Gilling Street to its end. Continue along Vernon Place. Bear round to the left by the Jacob's Ladder pub, just opposite the pub, turn right, brace yourself and descend carefully back to the moor down Jacob's Ladder. Same height as the roof, that's the Methodist Chapel. 111 steps, are you ready for this? The 111 steps were built here by a local merchant called Jacob Pamblin in the 19th century as a more convenient link between his house and workshop. So we're halfway down, and we're only just level with the chapel roof. Steep, isn't it? Look at that rain. Today's walk comes from 50 Walks in Cornwall, the AA Guide. It's number 30, a long walk through historic Falmouth. It's three miles long. They reckon it takes four hours, and I expect to explore everything you would need that. Well, what did you make of our walk around Falmouth? I really enjoyed it. There's lots to see, isn't there? Yeah, I like the vibrancy of the town. The student life gives it that extra edge, I feel. But you've got the bustling sort of town centre, then you move out towards the Pendennis sort of area, don't you? Yeah, around which is really the... historic. You've got all of the older keys yeah. down that end, haven't you? You can yeah. sense the history behind it all. Good um, walk. Yeah, I'd give it 7 out of 10. Only a 7? I think I'd push it up to an 8. An 8? Yeah. 7 and a half then. <laughs>